One night, I was hanging out with a couple friends just looking at a bunch of different operating systems. Until we found one that actually looked kind of interesting. What we found was Calibri OS, an operating system so small it can fit on a single 1.44 megabyte floppy disk. And it has super low minimum requirements, only needing 8 megabytes of RAM with a 60 megahertz Intel Pentium CPU. Yeah, this thing is so well optimized that it could run on the OG Pentium. So I want to give this thing a try and see really what Calibri OS is all about, and see if it could potentially bring some new life into some old computers. While I was doing my research on Calibri OS, I actually was really surprised. My first initial look of this operating system, I thought it would be Linux based because, well, what other kernel would it be? But no, this is actually 100% written in assembly language and is a fork of menu, menu, bro, am I stupid? Menuet OS. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm a little stupid. I'll definitely want to check out Menuet OS in a different video. Alright, so now we gotta get this to a floppy disk, which at first I was kind of unsure on how to do. Because while I do have an external USB floppy drive, I don't have a way to write the image to a floppy on Linux. But if I'm being honest, I just didn't look hard enough. So what I ended up doing is I downloaded the image off the website, extracted it, copied it to my server, then I hopped on Windows NT, copied my files off the server, and then used disk write to write the image to the floppy disk. Now with the image ready to go, we're all good. Now what computer am I going to use to test this first? Well, that's where this computer comes into play. What I have here is an IBM AppDiva from 1998, equipped with a 400MHz Intel Pentium 2, 96MB of RAM, and an ATI Radeon 7000. This computer was given to me by some cowboy hat wearing viewer of the channel. This computer is actually quite special, because it's still running its OEM copy of Windows 98 First Edition. I will definitely be imaging the contents of this drive. But with all that aside, it's time to actually plug in the machine and boot off that floppy. Oh, okay. Uh, ATI Radeon VE. 640x480. Okay. So this is options for before you start, I'm assuming? So essentially what this is doing is making a RAM disk and just decompressing the OS into the said RAM disk. Oh. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So I don't have a mouse or keyboard. I don't know what's going on there. Either I don't have a mouse or keyboard or the thing is frozen, which... I mean, I don't know why, but let's give this thing a bit of a restart. All right, I wanted to check this really quick. So you can change the video settings. We can do 1024 by 768 with 32 bit color. Okay, let's boot with this, I suppose. Uh, here we go. Uh, okay. It froze again and it froze on setting mouse. You know, I have an idea. So I'm currently using PS2 peripherals, which, I mean, it, they should work, ideally. But uh, I have this cheap uh, USB optical mouse, and I have this cheap little USB keyboard. Uh, I'm just going to plug that in and see if maybe it'll detect that somehow. It also could be that there's the BIOS setting that I have to set that I haven't done yet. But uh, we'll look in the BIOS if this doesn't work. Oh, 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 our, my PS2 peripherals work. And this USB optical mouse does work too. Okay. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter now. Uh, I can just use my normal peripherals because we're, we're in. You know, with the amount of icons that I'm seeing on this desktop, this looks very fully featured for just being 1.44 megabytes big. Let's see, we have welcome. Oh, my page not available. Well, I don't have a network card in this machine uh, because it was removed. And I don't have an extra network card I can throw into this thing, so we're just gonna live without networking. So if we go to Game Center, okay, wow, that's a that's a lot of games. Well, we gotta go play my favorite game, Minesweeper. Oh yeah, go for the corners first. Bruh. I mean, I guess there's enough of that. Shit. Okay, so this thing has. Okay, that's a file manager. Uh, what is that? Whoa. Okay, so. Immediately when I open this file manager, this looks like the same file manager that you would see on Windows XP. Or not not the same, but like it looks very similar to the file manager on Windows XP. Or maybe like the file manager on Vista, like it has this like design over here. Uh, I don't know. Okay, but this thing 
Okay, and then there's another one. So there, we have three file managers. Why? Can this one connect to FTP? Uh, no. I don't see any FTP functions. Can this one do it? About. Okay. I mean, I don't know. You know, it ain't that bad. I mean, we gotta... What? Tiny pad. Tiny pad. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's enough there. You know, I'll give this credit, you know, this is actually, like, really cool. You know, the fact that this could even just, like, run on a system that this old... Okay, so I couldn't help but notice when I was in here, there's a demos... There's a... Well, first, there's a 3D folder. Oh. Okay, so we have 3D demos here. Oh. Y what? I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of, like, 3D Flower Box, the screensaver and dozens of versions of Windows. Wait, what? We're using 100% CPU usage, rendering a fucking cube? Really? Oh, Jesus Christ. So this is software rendering? Whoa. What the fuck? Okay, 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 okay. The frame is are dropping. The frame are... The frame is drop. Oh, I can look around, though. Can I... Oh, I, you can move with arrow keys. Except maybe not, because for some reason I can't get out of this corner. Bruh. I, okay, well, something is moving me into the back of this corner. I don't know what that is. I'm not just pressing anything. Oh. Oh, is it my mouse? It is. You use the mouse to control this. This is kind of weird. Oh, shit. 30 FPS on gears. Unsupported processor instruction. Okay. Well, you know, that makes sense. With the CPU this old, I would expect to get that error at least a couple times. Okay, so these are just like little 2D demos. Whoa! What? Oh, these are like screensavers. What? Look at that. Okay, so this one really reminds me of like a silicon graphics demo from like the 90s. You know what I'm talking about? Like on the older Irix workstations, like they would have some demos like this. I don't know. It kind of looks like that to me. I cannot help but notice having most of these demos open use like 100% of CPU usage. Look, let's open that again. Oh yeah. CPU load, 100. System panel. Okay, so this is just settings. Graphic bench. Huh? Test. Okay. I don't know what's going on testing my graphics hardware okay so all of these are just cpu id we can see cpu clock speed 400 megahertz intel pentium 2 skin config okay so this this is cool you can just change basically what the entire thing looks like through this little menu here ram discs oh okay ghost monitor i like that it's called ghost monitor that's just i <laughs> okay system monitor well, i mean if you wanted a second task manager i mean i guess it's there this operating system seems to have just like two of everything. That's like, that's interesting. Web view. This is a very basic web browser. That's crazy there even is a web browser in here. And there's a second one, NetSurf. Uh, okay, so we don't have a network adapter, so we're just not going to be able to use NetSurf because I, I don't have, I don't have network and it's trying to download something. So, hmm, not mounted. We're going to open app plus anyway. Icon edit, easy shot, guide table oh okay so we do have an ftp client that's nice to have actually okay this single floppy disk would be actually great to use i'm trying to fix old computers because sometimes i just need something to work so i can copy files to something or whatever and this this kind of looks like it would do the trick okay so this is still download trying or trying to download can i get this to go away graphics we have an image viewer we have graph building utilities yeah, spreadsheets, man. We got spreadsheets. We have all of this in 1.4 megabytes? That is some mind-blowing compression algorithms. That is crazy. Bruh, I'm just too good. Okay. The computer is losing. The computer is losing. I am better than this Pentium 2. Look, look, guys, look. Fuck you. Bro, I could literally have a feel- Fuck. I could literally have a field day on this. Dude. Alright, so like, quick secret, I've never been good at Flappy Bird. Not even when I was younger. <laughs> you know, I might be monkey brain, but <laughs> this is actually kind of fun. So I'm wondering what kind of programs you can, like, can you, is there a package manager on here? Can you, like, install other programs? Is there, like, a repository? What kind of thing are we looking at here? Be okay, well, you know, I'm gonna grab a USB drive with some stuff on it to test on here. Actually, hold on, can we see if we have sound? Volume. Uh. Okay, so I'm gonna go and just say that we don't have sound. Do I throw a sound card in here and see if that'll work? So, uh, I have two options if I really want to get sound working. 
since it's not detecting the onboard sound here, it's some crystal chip or whatever. I have this, which is a Sound Blaster Auto G Platinum, or I have this, which is an older Sound Blaster Live. This is an older version of the Sound Blaster Live card that I have in my 98 box, but uh, I was thinking that maybe if I throw one of these in there, we can have sound. If it'll have drivers for this, I don't... I don't know if there's like a like a hardware compatibility list somewhere that I can look at or what. All right, so it's a few days later and I have a USB with some media just to test this with. And since the last time I was looking at this thing, I still have not gotten sound to work. I've tried all different sound cards. I even pulled the sound card from my Windows 98 box and put it in here, still didn't work. Also, this screensaver is sick by the way, but uh, let's wake this thing up. I'm just gonna put in my USB and see if it just pops up. Okay, it is right there. Yes. All right, so let's try the first image here. Oh, would you look at that? Beautiful, AB11 MR2. Huh. <laughs> All right, so now to try this video. Let's see. Uh, is there not a video? What? There's DOSBox on here? Okay, well, that's kind of crazy. There's DOSBox on here. I didn't even see that before. I mean, F-Play looks like it's supposed to be the, uh, like the, the video player, but, but it doesn't seem to be working. Can I open that? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, it doesn't seem to be... Hmm, there's just like an asterisk there. Is that, does that mean it's running? I don't think that video is going to play, unfortunately. But hey, you know what? At least we got the, uh, the images. Overall, I think this OS is actually kind of cool. So going back to the question I had in the beginning of the video, can it bring some new life into these older computers? I would say yes, kind of. The only reason why I say kind of is because, yeah, it's cool and it works, but there isn't really any real support for it. I kind of see it as like a good way to maybe get a computer up and running if, if you need to use something to copy files to it or something like that. I do not see how anybody could use this as a daily driver. If you wanted to use an old computer as a daily driver and have some modern support for things, I would probably use Tiny Core Linux. But with that being said, like it if you like it, dislike if you hate old computers and Calibri OS, or if you just hate me. I have a bunch of cool videos coming up soon, so definitely stay tuned.